Hello once again, this is Google Eto Manana from the Art and Culture of Wellness channel. I hope you join me in my topic today um, on coping with death and loss in South Africa and how a therapy can be useful for endings. So what I have for you today is introduction. I will, I've written a small introduction on this presentation, but I will expand on it. Um, the importance of acknowledging death and endings, cultural beliefs and practices surrounding death in South Africa, how we use our therapy to process grief and loss, and how to create rituals and memories through our therapy and some concluding thoughts. So we cannot avoid death, it's death and endings. It's part of life. Something has to end, begin and it has to end at some point and this is who we are and this is how we are made um, difficult it carries a lot of difficult and heavy emotion but um you know whether we close a chapter in our lives or you know these experiences are very difficult to navigate because we lose a part of ourselves uh, but we have found that our therapy can be used as a um, form of creative expression for healing and for coping with a variety of emotional and psychological endings um, relating issues relating to endings and death. And this is a difficult subject to confront. Uh, it's especially hard to come to, into terms uh, with it in South Africa because of the high mortality rate in the country and um you know including a number of factors like uh, high rate of by high rates of violence poor state of public health care poverty hiv aids even though there have been many many um, attempts of improving these services we still are experiencing um, a higher than normal rate of death um, and in this instance when somebody dies when someone dies the bereaved are faced with a range of emotions, really, and feelings that can be hard to cope with. Um, so it might be anger, sadness, guilt, and fear are all common reactions to the death of a loved one. And grief is a natural process that takes time to heal. So you need to give time, yourself time. And it is a difficult experience for those who are going through it. Um, I think in South Africa, the traditional approach to dealing with death and loss is to hold large funerals and memorials. Uh, I know it's especially true in the black culture. These events are seen as an important way to honor the deceased and to help with the grieving process. It is also the way of the community to come together in support of the bereaved and to help them through this difficult time. So in addition to the traditional op op approach, there are a number of ways to cope with death and, death and loss in South Africa. Support groups are one of them, uh, as a great way of finding understanding and comfort for those who've gone through similar experience. Counseling and therapy also can be useful for those who are struggling to cope with their grief. Um, religious and spiritual beliefs also can provide comfort and strength during the time of loss. Uh, many churches, temples and mosques offer support to those who are grieving. Prayer and meditation can also be beneficial for those who seek solace in their faith. It is finally, it is important to remember that everyone grieves in their own way. There's no right or wrong way to cope with death and loss. It is important to find the approach that works best for each individual. It is also important to remember, remember that grief is a process that it can take time to heal. You know, death and grief, are, as I said, a difficult subject to confront, but it is important that everybody grieves in their own way and it takes time to heal, as I mentioned earlier on. So the importance of acknowledging death and endings. In many cultures, death and any are taboo subjects avoided and denied. Um, but what we find with the vibe, you know, making or pretending this or ignoring these realities, um, 
it can lead to unresolved grief and emotional distress. So when we acknowledge death and ending, it allows us to process our emotion and come to terms with the changes in our lives. And our therapy is one of the tools that is that can provide a safe and supportive environment for this process by allowing individuals to express their feelings in a non-verbal way. So cultural beliefs and practices surrounding death uh, in South Africa. Uh, what is nice is South Africa is very rich and diverse in cultural heritage. Um, so with that comes unique beliefs and practices surrounding death and mourning. For example, in some cultures, death is seen as a transition to the afterlife, while in others it's believed that the spirits of the deceased continue to play a role in their lives of the living. And others believe that once the, the death has come, it is appointed once to die and, you know, and that's the close of the chapter. Um, so art therapy can help individuals navigate through these cultural differences and find ways to honor their loved ones in a way that is meaningful to them. So through creative expression, um, those individuals can explore their own beliefs and values around death and dealings and find a way to incorporate that, those ways in, in their healing processes. How we use art therapy to process grief. So this can manifest, grief and loss can manifest in many different ways, uh, from sadness, depression, to anger and guilt. Um, Elizabeth Kubler I mentioned the, sta the stages of grief. So there is no one stage that a person, it's not a linear, you know, progression. You can be one day repressed, the next day it's anger. But eventually you will find um, acceptance at the right time and when you are ready. So art therapy provides a way to externalize this emotion and give them a tangible form. Uh, so that could be through drawing, painting, sculpture, and other forms of creative expressions. This, you know, tapestry, people make murals. This can be, individuals can explore their feelings of being safe and non-judgmental space. Um, so, you know, for them to cope and in a healthy way. Um, you know, sometimes people create rituals and memories through art therapy uh, because they are important part of the grieving process and as a way of making sense and making meaning and honoring your time spent with your loved one and remembering the person who passed away. A therapy can provide a way to create many from rituals and memorials that reflect the individual's unique relationship with the deceased. Through the art making, um, people or individuals or group can create objects that serve as physical reminders of their loved ones. Painting, sculpture, collage, um, journaling, you know, um, and you know, this can be displayed in a special place or time and incorporate it to a ritual or ceremony providing a way to keep the memory of the deceased alive. So the other thing is dealing with death and can be just closing thoughts, can be challenging. Um, but what we found with our therapy, it is one of the most powerful tools of self-discovery and for healing. And in the context of South Africa, where cultural beliefs and practices around death and device and complex. Our therapy um, wants to provide a way to navigate these differences in mind, find meaning in the midst of loss. And it can be done in many different ways. Um, and it can help individuals find a path towards the phase of ending in a healthy manner. That's it for today. I hope you join me and have a listen to more as I'm talking more on deaths. Um, so I've identified the 22 types of death, how people die and how art therapy, I've begun briefly, made a brief presentation on how art therapy can help in each case. So this is Kukuleto Manana from the Art and Culture of Wellness channel. Thank you for joining me. Bye.